Welcome to the video lecture series, Culture, Worldview, and Origins. Again, we're Tim and Holly Nyquist. In this series, we're in the origins phase of the series, and we're in the second part. The first part of origins, we, we looked at applying the Western uh, cultural tendency to building a house of, of Velt build, which would be putting together the, the cultural tendencies, putting together the influences that factor into our seeing things and how, how things are perceived. Then we went into the Welt and Chang uh, process, which would be then applying that world picture that was formed through our, our, our experiences to looking at the world, looking out, applying what our grid has been made to look like, our picture of the world, applying it to the world, that's worldview. And now we're in the Welt model stage, which is uh, modeling out our belief system. And that includes uh, scientific models, scientific models of origins. In this series, uh, we're in the second part, which means that we are looking at modeling uh, the scientific model after a non-Western uh, cultural tendency type of, of looking at the world. And at this point um, of, the, of the house set up, if I can move out of the way for you, we have um, the 0, 0.0, which is the culture, or which is the, the invisible, the unconscious, and the conscious factors that come into forming who we are and how we think. Then uh, number one phase is, is the assuming of our um, source of reliable knowledge. And in this case of the non-Western, it's the external authority, locus of authority, which is assuming a revealed uh, source of knowledge, which in this case is biblical, the biblical revelation. Then out of that, there's four columns that represent the belief system, basic beliefs uh, that are brought up out of the source of reasonable knowledge. Then on, on the beliefs is a structure which represents the, the theoretical system of thought that is formed based on those beliefs. On the theoretical thought system, then there are three methods of how to get to reliable knowledge or truth through these different methods, through uh, rationalism, but not human reason, but through reasoning, through with God's reasoning, through God's word. Empiricism, not limited to human empiricism, but empiricism as, as that God reveals. God can reveal to us and, and make, as it was in the case of the servant of, of Elijah, be able to see what existed in this other dimension. And then skepticism. Skepticism is not skeptic, uh, being skeptical of, of everything, but it's being skeptical of uh, other sources, other material, and comparing it to your base of, of source of authority. Then we have the type of science produced. And that's what I was proposing, is that it's a, it's a creator and a creationist science. Um, creator meaning that's our basic assumption. In the beginning, God. So I believe God exists. And then it says God created. And so the, the basic assumption is there exists a creator. And then looking out at the world and seeing how it was created. Um, it, it, you, we can spend a lot of time studying the creation, trying to prove there's a creator, but that's to invert the, the basic assumptions, biblical assumptions that are in Genesis chapter 1. Then on top of the science, we have the resources. Number one resource is, is God himself. And number two is the, um, what God created. Um, those are the other resources. Okay, so now on top of the resources, we have products. What are the products? The first product we have is the creation of the heavens and the earth. As outlined in Genesis chapter 1, verses 14 through 15. Let's take a look at what that says. And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the sky to distinguish between the day and the night. And let them be 
signs to mark the seasons and days and years. Let them serve as lights in the expanse of the sky to shine upon the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars as well. God set these lights in the expanse of the sky to shine upon the earth, to preside over the day and the night, to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw it was good. And that was evening. There was evening and there was morning the fourth day. A couple of observations about the creation of the universe, the creation of the heavens. Um, and God saw that it was good is that God created them with a purpose. They all have a purpose. And the purpose is to shine upon the earth, to give life unto the earth, to sustain life. Now, the light that God created, God created it. it. The light itself does not give life. God is the author of light, but of life. But without light, it, the earth cannot sustain life. So God created with a purpose, and the purpose was to sustain life, and the purpose was for signs and seasons. So in other words, when you have something that's created, you have something that has purpose. You have something that has why it was created and why it's there. So the first one is the universe, the heavens. Um, it was created. It was created with a purpose. Now you, you'll notice too, and there was morning, uh, or there was evening, there was morning the fourth day. The, the Hebrews start their day in the evening. And so their change from Monday to Tuesday does not happen at midnight, but theirs changes at sunset. And so then it changes to the next day. So that's why in the verses you'll, you'll notice, and there was, there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. I'm not going to comment right here and now on, on that being the fourth day of when the, the, the sun, moon, and stars were created, um, only to say that they were created on that day for a purpose. Um, that is not the first day that life was created. but. So life in this system appeared before the sun, whereas in the other house, the sun was first and through its radiation, through its heat, created life. Uh, this house follows a, a, different, a different pattern. Okay, next, next product we have is the creation of life. Genesis chapter 1 verses 11 through 13. What does it say? Then God said, Let the earth bring forth vegetation, seed-bearing plants and fruit trees, each bearing fruit with seed according to its kind. And it was so. The earth produced vegetation, seed-bearing plants according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, there was morning, the third day, okay? You get that? The third day. So the, the plants were created on the third day, the sun and moon stars the, the, the fourth day. And so they're, they're not in the, the, the order that uh, the Western uh, world would, would put them in. But again, I, I believe that it was written this way for a reason and to, to show that life did not come from the sun. The sun came after life. And sun does not create life. Sun st sustains life. But once that life is gone, like once my life is gone, that same sun will accelerate the decomposition of my physical body. So when there is no life, the sun and its rays are powerful at decomposing. So how can the sun create life. Um, well, I'm not going to attack it because that's a belief system. But uh, in, in this system, it says, God said. Okay, that is the key word. God said. 
because if you take out God said, much of the creation process is similar to the evolutionary process. What do we have? If you take out then God said and him commanding, let the earth bring forth vegetation, what you have is the earth bringing forth life, the earth bringing forth vegetation and fruit and plants. And that's basically the evolutionary theory, but without God said. So they, they are similar theories. Um, they, they both require a, a miracle of life. Um, and they, they one of them, um, the non-Western one, includes the voice of God, and the Western one excludes uh, the voice of God. So they are very similar. So the earth produced uh, vegetation. The earth produced, but each one according to its kind. So it was not a linear uh, progressive model, which is Western. It was a one after the other of, of first little plants, bigger plants, trees, is that God created each one separately and after its own kind. There was not a diversification of kinds after by, by mutations or by, by a genetic um, diversion of, of, of change, but it, uh, God created each one according to its kind and that's why there are different kinds. Um, explained by this model. Okay, so that is the origin of life. Next, we have the origin of man, the creation of man. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. What does it say? Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed the breath of life into his nostrils and the man became a living being. What this teaches in the non-Western Hebrew biblical framework is that matter, even if it be highly organized, does not produce life. It is that God created man in his own image and that creation was formed from the dust of the earth and it was perfect. It was organized. It was all there. It was designed. It was everything was, was made. But it didn't have life. It did not produce life. Life is something external to the matter. And then God breathed into, breathed life into his nostrils. And the man became a living being. So according to the non-Western biblical framework, um, life is from God. First, it was produced by God's command that the earth produce, and the earth produced. Then, in another scenario, God commanded the waters to produce, and they produced. In this one, God does not command. God says, then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground. And so in the, the non-Western biblical or Hebrew framework, man is different. Man possesses different characteristics and qualities because he was made differently. He was made in the image of God. And he was made to choose and to reason what he's going to believe about that image. So those are the the basic products about what those columns produce. What did the resource number one, God, om omnipotent, eternal, created the physical world, the temporal world, and, and with those resources then God created the, the heavens, God created then life, and lastly God created man. This man, the top of the house, this man then concludes. What would this man conclude? Looking down at his science, looking down at the, the rules, the methods, this man concludes the creator God of the Bible exists and is worthy of all honor. 
Now, is his conclusion any different or much different than his foundation? And the response is no. It's built into his foundation. And, and that is why it's, it's, you have to put in your foundation what you're going to conclude because your conclusion can't go outside the foundation. It has to be included in it. So, Revelation 4.11. What does Revelation 4.11 say? They cast their crowns before the throne, saying, You are worthy, our Lord and our God, to receive glory, honor, and power. For you created all things. By your will they exist and came to be. That is what this man concludes. All glory and honor to the Father. You are worthy, our Lord and our God, to receive glory, honor, and power, for you created all things. So this man concludes that God created all things. And he believes that. The other house concluded God does not exist. How can humans that have the power to reason come at such different conclusions. Again, that takes us back to Stephen Jay Gould and his original quotes. His quote of saying that all reasonable people do not see things the same way, but because of culture, prejudice, theory and habit, men perceive things differently. How do you perceive them? How do I perceive them? I think it's time that we, we, we take um, seriously the, the, the assumptions that we're basing our life off of. And those assumptions can't be changed by evidences and proofs because the evidences and proofs in my scientific model are based on my assumptions. I, I, I guess the only question would be, are you content with your assumptions? Uh, I am, I'm, I am content, and I, I, don't, I don't feel the need to change anyone. If you are not content, um, then maybe you need to review your assumptions and your, your source of reliable knowledge. Again, we're Tim and Holly. You're welcome to correspond with us, to us, and um, we just just sharing what what we've learned. It's been a long process, but we wanted to get it out there so that uh, other people can learn, other people can can see the process we've been through, be able to hear it, and uh, compare it to their process and compare it to the house that that they're currently living in. Thank you again. Hope to see you in the next one.